After eight years in power, President Mohamedou Buhari will hand over power to President-elect Ashua Jikola Tinubu against all odds today at the Eagle Square. What are Nigerians expecting from the incoming 16th President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who garnered 8.8 .8 million votes to emerge in February of this year? The headlines from the national dailies. What are the people talking about? What are the things that are making headlines? Of course, baby is going to be the inauguration, but there are other issues that Nigeria faces. And so we'll be looking at the headlines on Off the Press this morning. Good morning to you. Welcome to this a very special week in the life of our country. Good morning. My name is Nyam Gul and happy inauguration to you. This is 29th of May 2023, a defining moment in the life of Nigeria. I am Maureen. Well, today we'll be taking a look at the campaign promises of the incoming president, Bola Ashiwaju Ahmed. What were those things he promised us? Will he keep them? But most importantly, we want to also wait and hear his promises for the next four years. Yeah, we also are aware of the speech that was given by uh, the President Muhammad Buhari. And there are some key issues within that speech that uh, need uh, x ray And we do hope that when we have our guest in the house, uh, he will do justice to all those things that were said and what this administration is expected to do if it is it gets sworn in today hopefully from 10 o'clock there will be that occasion that will uh will mark the swearing in of the sustained president yeah by 8 30 mm -hmm. you know uh, activities are expected yes. to have you mm -hmm. know uh, set us sitting down but by 10 the swearing in the parade will will take effect mm. And so these are some of the things we'll be taking a look at today. What are your expectations as a Nigerian? Mm. How excited are you about today? We do hope that you can call us on uh, this show or send us um, a message. You, you can tweet at us. Uh, our, our social media platforms all are open for you to tweet at us or send us a message via any of them that you are comfortable with, Instagram, Facebook. Um, Twitter, uh, even YouTube, <laughs> if you can uh, do that as well. But make sure that you interact with us and tell us what your expectations are and uh, let us also put it out there. Because tell you what, whatever you see, there's someone somewhere who is listening. It is a new beginning for us as a people, a new beginning for Nigerians, a new Nigeria that must work, mm -hmm. a Nigeria mm -hmm. that must be devoid of the kind of things that we are crying against today. Mm. And I'm really, really impressed by the fact that uh, all the players, um, like um, the candidates of the other political parties, especially the aggrieved ones that have gone to court and all that, have, uh, have given a message to their um, followers to be peaceful, no matter what it is. Today, this occasion must happen, but we trust God, we trust the judiciary, we trust everything we should trust to make sure that justice is done. So whether, whether after a few months uh, the president who will be sworn in today is removed or not, Nigeria must continue to exist. So we cannot do anything right now to uh, bring Nigeria back to maybe the stone ages and all that. So I'm really impressed with what has happened. Nobody is calling for a protest. Nobody is calling for any unrest or anything like we see in other countries. So I must commend them. Definitely. The body language of the opposition has been positive. Right from after the elections uh, results were announced, uh, we saw how that uh, they've been able to tell their supporters to calm down. Mm -hmm. And indeed, their supporters have shown that maturity in calming down. Uh, but today is sacrosanct, isn't it? That's what we've been saying. That's what mm -hmm. lots of analysts have been saying. May 29th inauguration is sacrosanct. Today, a president-elect will be sworn in along with his vice president. And uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu <laughs> has been known as the godfather in Nigeria's politics, hasn't he? The Jagaban, uh, former president, uh, governor uh, of Lagos State. 
former senator of the Federal Republic. He's been a king a kingmaker. Uh, he's 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 someone who has supported candidates to emerge over the years. And and according to him, it is time for him now to emerge as the king, as he said it in Yoruba Emiloko. Mm. Um, the Jagaban himself is taking over the seat of office today as Nigeria's number one citizen. Yeah. citizen. Uh, he and his wife, Oluremi uh, Tinubu, will be taking over Asorok today. Uh, Nigerians, our expectations are high uh, because of all that we've experienced, the disappointment we've experienced in the last eight years mm. with this outgoing administration. Nigerians are speaking, they are writing, they are, they are crying and groaning. Though one of the things Nigerians are not excited about, one of the things, mm -hmm. one of the many things, mm -hmm. is that uh, there is a promise that the incoming government is going to continue from where the outgoing government mm -hmm. stopped. It's scary. To scary. A lot of people. It is a scary <laughs> thought. It is a scary statement. It's a scary proposition. Mm -hmm. How do you continue from where this government stopped when we're saying this government has failed us? Well, uh, the government will not agree to that. The, the outgoing government will not agree to that. I, I read the speech of uh, the outgoing president and he said that he has delivered. He keeps saying that. Uh, there was no apology whatsoever that um, I may have done wrong in some places and all that. It's, even if he said some of these things, but they were not strong enough. People give goodwill to this present administration. No, no matter what they think they have done. People are still aggrieved. They should have seen that. Uh, well, well, uh, we're going to see a new president today come up. A president, the only kingmaker in history that we know that wants to become a king. And he has be actually become a king. But I particularly uh, did not like the statement of um, the wife. Okay, I'm not comfortable. Let me not say I didn't like it. The, the wife of the president-elect, he's still president-elect now, he said, we do not need Nigeria's money to survive. Uh, okay, well, ordinarily, it will be the truth because Tinubu is very rich. The family is really stinkingly rich, even though they may not accept that. But the only other time I heard this statement or something close to it was when the wife of uh, uh, the late Sania Bacha made the statement that no matter what, the government does, no matter what EFCC does, no matter how many cases they lose, uh, no matter how much money is taken from them, they will never be as poor as someone who we feel is the richest man in Nigeria right now. <laughs> so <laughs> it scares me when people are so bold to say some of these things, no matter how true they may be. But like I always say, meanings are in people not in words. So be careful the kind of words that you are using to address the people because a lot of people might understand those words differently. And the percentage that understands it positively may be, may be less than the one that understands it negatively. So we always have to uh, look at these things. And that's why we always were proposing before now that people who must speak to the public must engage the services of qualified publicists, for qualified people who can tell them what to say and say them rightly. Well, that statement made at the Beledutri service is what you're referring to. Well, that's your opinion on it. Uh, but she's just being a wife trying to support her husband. She knows that there are uh, dissenting voices, voices that are not in support of her husband. Mm -hmm. She's, she's not um, oblivious of that. She knows that there are those who are not. I mean, four political parties and their candidates are in court with the husband mm -hmm. to contest this result. Um, uh, some residents of Abuja have gone to court to stop this swearing of today. The DSS, the police, they've all come out to raise the alarm that there are plots to truncate this inauguration. So she knows that they have enemies in court or people who are not fans of her husband mm. and I think it's uh, she's just being a wife really and trying to explain to you're, those you're who have doubts nice. you're being nice uh, well <laughs> I, I'm trying to be balanced yeah. she's mm. trying to uh, explain to those who have doubts she's trying to win uh, more votes so to speak uh, for her husband saying don't be afraid we are not here to steal Nigeria's money um, we have enough uh, because corruption is a thing here, Nyango. Corruption is a thing. We've seen the monumental 
we've seen how corruption has messed things up in the past eight years. Um, 7,000 cases, was it not on Friday? We're talking about judgment debts. Mm. 7,000 cases were on corruption alone. All right, so she's trying to clear the air for the incoming administration, trying to allay fears. You have nothing to worry about with regards to Nigeria's money. We're not going to steal it. But it doesn't stop at them, right? Mm -hmm. The ability of the husband to get a team that will not steal our money <laughs> is a major thing. But Ashwaju has been credited for having the, the ability to gather a good team, especially during his tenure as governor of Lagos State. It's one of the things he's, uh, his fans have uh, to say about him that Ashwaju was able to, uh, or he has the knack to be able to get a good team around him. And so I want to see, that's one of the things we're waiting to see. Mm. His ministerial list. Who are those that he's going to pick? I hope it's not going to be the usual job for the boys that we saw this in this outgoing administration, which is why we can see what's happening with the aviation industry, for instance. Mm -hmm. we, um, uh, the, 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 the outgoing minister for education, Adamu Adamu, said he didn't said have any idea. He had idea. no clue <laughs> about that ministry, yet he was thrown in there. Yeah. Rauf Ariba Shalam made the same comment. He had no clue about what that ministry was about, yet he was thrown in there. So we do not want to see a situation where it's just going to be job for the boys who deliver during elections. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the changes we want to see in this administration. As a person, I'd also like to see a situation where when a ministerial list is sent to the National Assembly, they should be sent with portfolios. Not a situation where you find a lawyer, for instance, mm -hmm. facing the panel, as it were, and they're asking him questions as a lawyer, which should lead to, you know, people having a peek into what he could do if he became maybe the attorney general or something. And then tomorrow you're giving him the Ministry of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. He didn't answer any question to that regard. He didn't know anything about take that. Yeah, so, take yeah, bow. just take a bow and, take and leave. Bow. That's what we, we, it, we heard. It's so wrong because if someone is coming as an expert in agriculture, you want to interrogate him. You will interrogate him according to the field that he has come to face. Okay, if they had asked Adamo Adamo, for instance, questions on education, we would have found out there and then that he had no clue. But so would they have rejected him? Is the question. That's another we question. Had a rubber stamp National Assembly, Nyamgo. So let them try to bring ministers or a list of ministers, would be ministers, according to their fields, people who already know these things, so that if they're ask, asking the questions, they will be answering these questions and Nigerians can be able to uh, have confidence in them that yeah. they are going to do X, Y, Z. For instance, Kiyama was being asked as a lawyer. He was asked questions as a lawyer. He said he was going to unbundle the judiciary, he was going to do this, he was going to do that. He ended up in a, a different ministry. So everything he had as a vision for the ministry that he hoped he was going to be uh, superintending over, they were just thrown in the bin. And in the, as he was leaving, he did say that it was not constitutional to have ministry of, uh, ministers of state. Ministers of state. Mm. He said that. I don't know whether he meant that it was not constitutional for them not to have things to do or that the ministers for state were not supposed to be. Uh, because he said they were supposed to have functions, but they, they went on without any functions, and it is not constitutional. I didn't Why understand didn't say anything before, before now. That's, that's the, the question. That's the so, thing. what this administration we want to see meritocracy enshrined, mm. enthroned, mm. and nepotism done away with. We want to see career politicians sent back to to the fields. Let them go look for jobs somewhere else. This is things are so bad in this country. We need people who will hit the ground running, who know what they're there to do and what they're supposed to do. So it's one of the things we also expect from this government that we won't wait for months, six months, before we see that list of ministers. Mm -hmm. We want act, in fact, today. After all, uh, the president-elect went overseas to cool his brain and then fix that list. That's what we were told. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that he's going to announce at least three key positions today and then uh, in in matter of one or two weeks, give us a ministerial list. People who are going to, especially because there's so much contention, uh, it should be done swift enough so that Nigerians will know or at least begin to see that this government is serious. Mm -hmm. If that is done, then 
some kind of confidence will return into the yeah. people that and all that. That would be the first step. Mm -hmm. That would be the first step in building confidence, mm -hmm. not just in those who voted him in, but those who have doubts about him mm -hmm. and his ability to be in charge of his administration. Mm -hmm. One of the things that he did, uh, Yaradua, to the people is that he came out and said, I know for a fact that the process that brought me to power was flawed, but I'm going to do something about it. Whether Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu likes it or not, he knows that the process was not as good as Nigerians wanted. However, if he can be humble enough to make Nigerians know that he is aware of this and he will do something about it, that's another plus for him that uh, Nigerians will give to him. Well, today we came to work and the roads were free. I it's don't know. Public holiday. I don't know if it's public holiday or it's because there's a lot of people have gone for the inauguration. Uh, we know that, okay, a lot of people also say that they, I don't want to use the word Agueros, but, <laughs> but he's like a godfather to them, putting food on their table and being good to them. And so maybe a lot of them have traveled to uh, Abuja to go and uh, witness the inauguration. I don't know. Someone who carried me today, the driver who carried me today, mm. he kept saying, happy inauguration, happy inauguration. May yeah, Tinubu's tenure be good. So, All right, well, mm. moving forward now to the theme of the day, and our theme of the day is the effects of a new beginning on our mindset. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is a new beginning. Mm -hmm. what, what is it doing to us psychologically? Uh, you've just expressed it right now. The driver that brought you yeah. here today is in a very good mood and saying, may this new administration Mm -hmm. you know do us good yeah and it's something you know it's sad that we we seem to have a history where nigerians begin to miss previous governments mm -hmm. as their successors are exiting we begin to wish uh you begin to say that oh the previous government did us better even though when the new one was coming in we were thinking that that one going was the worst mm -hmm. possible and that the next one would do better. But then we've seen a situation where it does seem that we remember our past leadership, uh, our past leaders with nostalgia. We wish they were the ones back in power mm -hmm. because the ones that succeeded them did not do much to um, to, to do, did not do better than they did. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, it would appear that the ones that succeeded them did worse. So we're hoping that this incoming administration would break this jinx and change the narrative so that we don't miss our past leaders. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I just saw a, a, a write-up uh, from um, Okun Lagos, that's how we know him. By. Oh yes, yeah. I saw that Yeah, too. and he said that may, may nothing happen in Nigeria that will make us wish uh, we still had Buhari as our president. And in short, that means we still have our past um, administration like you just said so let us like scripture says be positive about today and about tomorrow rather than saying the days of your the days of the past were better let's hope for a nigeria that will be better uh, than what we experienced uh, in the past because our future is more uh, important to us no matter what we experience if a president is sworn in until otherwise stated by the courts or God himself, then we should give him the utmost uh, support to do what he needs to do. Exactly. Sometimes, sometimes the Lord works in mysterious ways. Yes, and that takes us to the top trending of today. The first top trending is protest as Irish youth shut down uh, Radio Nigeria uh, ninety-nine point one FM Ibadan owned by the federal radio corporation of nigeria that's the frc and that happened on sunday morning in ibadan and also in lagos here it happened mm -hmm. at the police station in ikeja they also went there to cause some uh, disruptions injured some police uh, men as confirmed by the police uh, pro benjamin hunde uh, according to these people uh, they, they, they they say they want to establish the fact that the united nations has given approval for yoruba nation to take off i don't understand what that is about yeah it's just uh, sometimes i i always say that uh, people who who, who wet the ground for this kind of things to happen are the ones I'm going to blame. If you go to the East, people don't travel on Monday. They don't go to the markets on Monday. Even though IPOP that started the sit-at-home has said that it's no longer uh, there. The, the, the law 
uh, the call for sit at home is no longer there. But the criminal elements have taken over. And so the people who are doing the Yoruba agitation, as it were, I wonder why it has to be on the eve of the swearing in of someone of the Yoruba stock exactly. that is going to be president. Exactly. What are you looking for in the you know, Dua uh, uh, nation, mm. uh, that you, nation Yeah, that you cannot get now that your, your brother, son. your son, your father, your everything, number is a number one citizen. So I don't know why that happened. Well, the police in Lagos said they've arrested a couple of them and they're investigating them. And from that investigation, we'll get to know who are sponsoring this kind of mm -hmm. acts. They call it an act of terrorism. And I, yes. I tend to agree because you're, you're talking about secession. You're talking about if the United Nations gave that approval, where, where is that document? When, when did they do that? Why, would Why the did they do Nations that? Yes. Give such an so I, I don't understand. And you, you understand the implication of going to hijack a radio station, right? Mm -hmm. To announce. To announce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's really, 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 it's a, an act of terrorism, it I, is. I think. So okay, the police so are right. So we wait to see the outcome of that investigation. Well, that's our first uh, top trending. Our second top trending is that Buhari signs. Al Majri out of school children commission bill into law that happened on Saturday in Yango. Mm -hmm. A lot of last minute things happening. <laughs> <laughs> last minute uh, bills being signed, last minute appointments, last minute loans, last minute for a government that took eight months. Mm. Or, I mean, six months to let us know who his ministers are mm. or to show that he knew what he wanted to do. To be doing this few hours to exit, it just raises lots of questions. The Almajiri's Out of School Children's Commission uh, is expected to provide a multimodal system of education to tackle illiteracy, according to them, develop skills acquisition and entrepreneurship program, uh, prevent youth poverty, among other things. And it was signed by the president on Saturday as the children were marking their Children's Day celebration. Other bills, eight other bills were signed by the, uh, the president also, but that was on Monday last week. And so um, you begin to wonder. Let's, let's clap for the president. He, did, he has done well. But mm -hmm. you know, how is the al Majiri bill different from, or the law, different from what Jonathan did? Um, he's credited with the highest number of uh, al Majiri schools in our history. Mm -hmm. And I know how many people were fighting him that um, uh, children being on the street is a traditional thing in the north. So he should stop removing them from the streets uh, and li leave them there. Why would he bring al Majiri? The core northerners were saying this. People who should be talking for their people advocating making sure that their people get an education were the ones that were saying he should stop this because that is part of their culture so taking their culture from them is a bad thing so i don't know what the difference is between this law and uh, what jonathan and what did. is the purpose why did, for this yes one, why really? didn't what he just strengthen yeah this? why didn't just he just strengthen that which jonathan did and all that but well they say when you're about to die it is not the things you have done that you regret, it's the things that you left undone. So in his, um, uh, let, me, let me not use dying days, in his 11th hour, maybe a lot of things are coming to him, revelations of things that he should have done and he didn't do, and he's doing them as a final thing. We'll still commend him. Government is a continuum. So let's just hope that the next administration will, will not come and rubbish everything that he has done, uh, but build on the good ones and then discard the ones that are not good enough. Well, it is same party, the All Progressive Congress, uh, and um, he has said he's going to build on what the outgoing president has done. So we, we, we are our fingers crossed. Mm. Our fingers crossed. We are full of excitement and expectations this morning, this day, 29th May. 2023 as history is being made in our country with the swearing in of the president-elect Ashwa Jibala Ahmed today at Eagle Square in Abuja. We'll take a break now to give you the weather report. It is a Mindset Monday edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Stay with us. <laughs> 